are the Rahia Edula, the Guadalupe palms. These, these two right in your front. This one and this one. Okay. Those have been there about 50 years. Okay. That's about the height of them. <laughs> Is the one to the right too, or no? These two are the same. The uh, what happens is, you know, this is how they are in the natural. If you have these in the landscaping, they'll prune all this dead fronds off. <coughs> you have to be very careful when they do that. Um, even in the Washingtonias, those great big Mexican sand palms like there, they have this same sort of skirting on them, and they, they go up, climb up the tree, and they <coughs> have some people die, you know, very recently. They get caught in, so they go up in here, and they start cutting the, the fronds off, right? And they get up in there and then the whole thing sometimes collapses on the can't breathe. Um, and one is a fan palm. Okay? So the fan palms look like a fan and the ones that have look like a feather are the feather palms. That's how you kind of So this one's what again? The one at the top, the, the, that Washingtoni, and, and even the Brahia I gave you are fan palms. Okay, and, they're both fan palms. And, and this is a fan palm as well which is a Mediterranean, which is called Camarops humilis. Okay. That's as well in the test, too. Camarops. That's on, yeah, yeah, that's on your list. Let me give you the numbers. Okay. So you can see how heavy that is. See, they're, they're a triangulated, triangle leaf, like a triangle. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is this one called again? This is called Carpobrotus chalance. Well, this is the ground cover of the carpet brotus. Chilean. So that's a Chilean, it's native to Chile. It has a purple flower and sometimes a cream flower. There's this whole patch of it growing here. I don't see any blossoms. Number, number, number. This one is probably Santa Cruz cultivar. With the flowers are the same. Blue hibiscus, very pretty. How do you see this palm? Do you see the palm? Yeah, well, the, the species is not as divided. So this one is actually probably Santa Cruz. So Aliagni with you, that was from last week. Oh, it's so nice. You can tell there's no water here. That's from last week, right? Yeah. Artemisia. Yeah. Yeah. Artemisia. Artemisia. Poes Castle. Poes Castle, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got that one. That's a called a Raulia. And uh, it, I brought that from Arizona. It's real drought tolerant, as you can tell. It's a very nice plant. What is, what is that? It's called a Raulia. Brac. B R A C T, I believe. The pretty part of this plant is the bract, so it's a modified leaf. <laughs> and in the center there is the flower. See how small it is? So when they say, well, what color flowers is it? Well, it's white. But you say that, they won't understand. So these are bracts. They're modified leaves that are colorful. They're very And then extreme. you'll see those on a lot of different these plants. Extreme thorny? Modified leaves. Mm -hmm. I think so. This comes in white, variegated. I know when yellow, they get very orange, orange, tough to card to cut. All different shades of red and purple. Don't these Ground get tolerant. don't these get very uh, hard to cut when they get thick? Uh, they're, they're very sharp and they're miserable. There's thorns all over them. Yeah. yeah. It's like what is it? Arches. You haven't had it yet because you weren't here. It looks like. Well, you were here last time, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should know this. Then. I should know. It. <laughs> What's this? Arcostaphylos. Dancer Flora, yeah. Howard McMinn. There you go. Yeah. It doesn't have the blue color like the glass color. Oh, yeah? Is this actually yeah, the Howard McMinn? Nice. Yeah. Other one? That's Howard McMinn. Okay. So the flowers, are they always going to be that tiny? No. Just, they're not quite open yet, I don't okay. think. Yeah. You know, they're, they vary in different plants. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was a picture of that. No. Uh, you know. How about the redder stems? It sure looks like hard to me. How about the more reddish stems that it has? That's very typical of all the manzanitas. 
Yeah, that reddish. Wow. What are, oh, I know what this is. Day plant. Very nice. Look at how thick that trunk is. Usually you know, she is a house plant. That's been here for, well, these were built in the 50s for men's dormitories. Oh, okay. All these little faculty buildings. So it's probably planted then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what's it called? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So this is this is number um, oh, ninety-seven. Very fast growing. You only plant this from a one gallon. You can see the the, the, the spots in it. There's five spots there. Okay. Cystus X perfurius. This is the purple rock rose. You'll, you'll you, see other rock roses. You only want to plant them oh, oh, from one gallon? Yeah, because they're so fast. <laughs> they're fast. And they get woody. Look how fast they're getting woody. Yeah, they're this is about two woody. years old. Oh, there's the flower. And there's the flower. That's 88. Oh. 88. Can I see that? 88. Oh, I was about to take it. Thyrofolius skylark. So it's a shorter one. Just popping it. You can just see it just covered with bloom. See them? Ready to pop? You'll see a lot of these in here. Although they did shear them back a lot, so I don't know if they've sheared off a lot of the flowers. So this is Ceanothus what? Ceanothus thyrofolius skylark. Chrysofolia. The students have been cutting through here because of construction, so they've been cutting through. And this was actually real nice. This is the number 12 Aeonium species. This one is probably Schwarzkopf because it's the purple one. It does come in a green. And this is, but it's not very green. I think either the squirrels or the people. Is so that one right there? Yeah, there's one right there. That's probably Schwarzkopf because it's dark purple. But then, this is Desert Museum. It's called Circidium. This one here? Yep. Yeah, Circidium. Cool. It's number 75 on your book. Circidium Desert Museum. And right next to it is the blue one. Yeah, we have These are street yellow trees. Flowers. Yellow flowers. What differentiates the flowers? Yeah. Well, if you look at them, uh, I'd have to show you one. But it's not too. Excuse me, forgot to show you. But that desert museum has more of a red dot in there, or, or orangey red. How do you tell the difference? I can't remember. I think it might have a little bit, but not as dense. Here, grab that flower. Can you reach that flower? So you said which one has flowers? Oh, it hasn't popped yet. <laughs> this one, the way you tell the difference, look at the leaf. It's a blue green. It's not bright green like the other desert museum. See, it's a blue green. And this has thorns and the others don't. Okay. Jody, how do you tell the difference between the scene? Jody, I have a question for you. Oh, really? This is the Prunus alyssifolia alyssifolia. See, it makes a good native drought tolerant plant a background, evergreen background shrub. So you see, when they say natives don't look good, well they do. You know, it depends on how you arrange them and plant them. And which, yeah, these are very sharp on the leaf margins. You'll get another thing that's called a lionized, which is a Catalina cherry, but this is sometimes smooth. So this will have covered with fruit later on. The flower is very inconspicuous, the berry that's red. What is this one? This is called number 81, uh, 108. Dandromachan harfordii. Very pretty. Gray-green leaf. It's usually very full. They've been 
See, they've been construction's been working here. How do you pronounce this one? Again? Well, I say dren dendromican. and other people call it dendromican. If you want to pronounce it that way, okay. just spell it right. Our 40 carpus betuloides is number 81. Circle carpus. Circle carpus. This is a, a, also an evergreen, and it, it's very unusual flower. It comes out, and you'll, there's none on it yet, but you'll see it as it comes. No flower yet, but you'll see it a little later on in the season, and we'll show it to you. I don't see any on here now. But it has a, uh, the reason it's called Betuloides is because it has a birch type of leaf on it. So this one is called Circocarpus. Would you call that venation on it? Like the thicker, the deeper venation yeah, or more yeah, of a... It's a more prominent venation. On the underside. And it's a, called mountain mahogany. Mountain mahogany. Easy to tell. Yeah. This one is a... Which one are you seeing out there? Cyanothus Joyce Coulter. Joyce Coulter. Oh, I see. And Way it's, bigger it's leaves. Bigger leaves. So that's how we're going to know the difference. Oh yeah, between those two, but then we get more cyanothus harder later really on. Bad. So what differentiates this one with height. the griseus? Well, the griseus is low, like kind this. of a lower. See, like this one. Yeah, okay. Higher, right? mm -hmm. I don't know. So that this, this one is, is more of a shrub, like and griseus is more like a ground. Yeah, this this is ties. more. Yeah, this culture is more larger shrub, shrub. small tree. Okay. So that should last you at least in your thirties. Oh, yeah. I've broken two of them. Shoestring. Oh, I'm so sorry. You okay? Don't worry. Um, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's Tom. It's alright. 